I'm Tiger Height, and I'm here to make WWE, NXT, and Pro Wrestling majestic again. Once again, it was very much the same as it was on Raw. It was perfectly enjoyable. I liked most and I hated. But would I go out of my way to watch this NXT? No. So, double-edged sword. Good, indifferent, bad, whatever you want to call it. I kind of like being in the middle of the road. I'm more of a glass half full instead of a glass half empty kind of guy. Now, come to Wednesday evenings, Thursday mornings, that might be different, but it is what it is. Let's talk about our first match. For the NXT Heritage Cup Championship, we have Noam Dar defending against Chad Gable. It went all, I think, six rounds? Six rounds? Six or seven rounds. But there were two pinfalls. So Chad Gable got a roll-up, or it was a Nova roll, excuse me, for Noam Dar to get the second round pin. And then it was a Chaos Theory in round four. So yes, no, it was, it was six. It was a no contest. Because it was a no contest, the champion retains. I like this. Structure. Development. But also, nobody really won. It still keeps Noam Dar that heel little shit. Excuse me. Chad Gable did not look bad because nobody really won. And I think that works. I swear to God, WWE is the only company that can do this shit right. God, thumbs up. Up next was Angel Garza and Humberto Carrillo taking on Idris Inoufi and Malik Blade. It was a fun match. I liked the aggression from Garza and Carrillo, but they weren't the ones who dominated. It was actually a formulated, structured match that had a dynamic that I really enjoyed. And at the end of the day, it was a pop-up kick for Garza and Carrillo to win. I'm going to give it an Orange Cassidy thumbs up. In our Iron Survivor Challenge match for the males, we have... Carmelo Hayes, and Josh Briggs. People were losing their minds with uh, the other one, uh, Brooks Jensen, getting their singles push. But I think we actually see a contrast to that as it relates to a singles. I think both of them are getting a singles push at some point in time. But Josh Briggs impressed me a hell of a lot more than Brooks Jensen. But that's just me. It was a moonsault, clean, kind of, for Josh Briggs to win. Now, obviously, there was interference with uh, Lexus King. But once again, Lexus King is involved in a main event program of some way, shape, or form. This was a good match. You have a very stunning win, but also stuff for the future. You know what this all gets? It gets a full thumbs up. We have a Wesley segment. Dominic came out, but Dominic gave an ultimatum for his NXT Championship opportunity. Where if Wesley gets the opportunity, but does not win, he will never get another title match for the North American Champion again. That's big stuff. Good stuff on both sides. Orange Cassidy thumbs up. It felt kind of rushed. And not only that, but Wesley still has to win a match to get the title opportunity instead of getting ahead of the title opportunity. Why would you want to do that? That's called being small brain. Blair Davenport and Faya Hale in the Iron Survivor women's qualifying match. They alluded heavily towards what's going on with Chase University and Andre Chase, which we will know next week. But what happened tonight was very interesting. Thea Hale tried to get Chase University behind her, but she couldn't. And not only that, but some of them left. Ooh, I love it. Chef's kiss great. It's such great story. Such great storytelling, and you just never know what's going to happen. And that's what we really need. We need that what's happening next week. And they promoted that throughout this match. 
but it didn't take away from the match. It was a knee to the face for Blair to win. With that distraction, it was a fine match. The story told a lot more than I expected. But to be honest with you, I think there was going to be more of a relationship between Andre Chase and J.C. Jane scandal than anything. I wouldn't hold my breath to it, but it almost looks like that given the body language. Body language is really important here, people. I'm going to give an Orange Cassidy thumbs up. Eddie Thorpe taking on Charlie Dempsey. I have no idea why Damon Kemp was not there, but it was a match. And it was a roll-up for Eddie Thorpe to win. It was whatever sandwich. And then there was a post-match by Gulak's group. I cannot remember their name for the life of me, but it was just a match. Eddie Thorpe just has not gotten me with really anything substantial since that NXT Underground match. That was like the only one, but to be honest with you, I think Damon Kemp really put that more over than Thorpe. Orange Cassidy, thumbs up. And this is being this is being really nice. So we had th- this match was originally scheduled for earlier within the night, but Zia Lee attacked Lyra Valkyria before that was her name, Lyra Valkyria. But Lyra was like, "No, I want to defend this title. Let's wait till the main event." And here we go. Our main event for the NXT Women's Champion Lyra Valkyria against Zia Lee. Becky Lynch beat Zia Lee the night before. Okay. I did not like that decision, clearly, on my other review. But I thought maybe that she would take this title off of this nothing burger and actually mean something. Because Zaya has been knocking out people and winning matches and doing really well on the main roster. But did she do that here? No. She didn't. It was a good main event. Perfectly acceptable. It was a fisherman suplex into a Mitsunoku driver for the win. Clean pin. Middle of the ring. Two high profile matches. If she won both, Zaya's on top. If she won one, that's awesome. She did not win a single match. She is a loser. She talks this big game. She paints her face. She kicks people in the head. But when it comes to when it counts, she loses. She's a loser. She's a big-ass failure. It was a good main event. Lyra tried her best. I think Zaya really carried this match a lot more. Uh, I can't believe it. They built Zia Lee so much after this knockout kick. There was so much potential. She had this aura, but they fucked it up. It gets a thumbs down. Like, like for the entire thing. Even though I like the match, it gets a thumbs down because the wrong person clearly lost. And not only that, I think they might have killed Zia Lee. But that was NXT. Let me know you thought about not only my review, but NXT in the comments down below or right over here next to me. Subscribe to the channel, get hats, and all of that great stuff will be in the bio of this channel or in the description of this video. And as always, be majestic. Also, comment your thoughts because I love the conversations and it helps the algorithm. So it would be 